a beautiful night we have in Corvallis, Oregon. We're inside Reeser's Stadium for a Pac-12 matchup. The 20th ranked Cardinal of Stanford maybe playing the best football in this conference on the road to take on the Oregon State Beavers. Well, the guys have been talking about it for the last a long while. The big story is no Bryce Love. That kid, number 22, Cameron Scarlett, who's from just up the road outside Portland. He is an Oregon native. Where is the love? Well, he is here. Cameron Scarlett, though, is going to be the running back for Stanford because Bryce Love won't be in uniform. That ankle sprain, whatever it is, Stanford doesn't give out a lot of details on the medical side, but a high ankle sprain, it seems like, will keep Bryce Love out of this one. Look at the fall night we have in Corvallis. Bryce Love has had a spectacular season for the Cardinal. 198 rushing yards per game, leading everybody by far. 51 yards per rushing touchdown. Nobody more experienced. Explosive nine rushes for 50 or more yards close to the all time single season record, but they won't be seeing Bryce Love in the backfield tonight. He will not play for the Cardinal for more on that. Let's go down to the field to Laura Rutledge. Yeah, Dave Stanford head coach David Shaw saying that Bryce Love just wanted to tape up that right ankle and get out there and play. Shaw, though, said he and his staff did not feel comfortable that Love could be effective tonight with this injury. And when I talked to Bryce Love earlier this week, he knew the importance of this game. He talked about wanting to be out here, not just for his Heisman hopes, but just to be out here with his team. So certainly disappointed he can't be here. But a huge opportunity for Cameron, Cameron Scarlett, as you said, the Portland native. I saw his mom right before the game, and she said that she was almost in tears when he found out last night he was going to be getting the start. She understands the huge opportunity for him and said that she's a little nervous but can't wait to see him out on this stage, guys. Yeah, thanks, Laura. He is pumped to be back here. Dave Fleming with you alongside Brock Heward. Great to have Brock with us here on Thursday Night Football. His neck of the woods, a conference you know so well. Okay, so we're all disappointed. We wanted to see Bryce Love. He's not out there. Can the Stanford offense still function at a high level? Yeah, it will. And you call a lot of baseball games and they're now a lineup that's maybe missing that home run hitter number four they got a lot of guys with a whole lot of other power that can get it done and as I look at my call sheet here I still see five tight ends I see five running backs I see three uh, quarterbacks that may play tonight you know if, if there's a group that could handle this it's David Shaw and just the amount of personnel that they love to play anyway on offense just don't have that dynamic home run hitter in the middle and it does seem like every year that's the case with Stanford so much stability in this program stability is not the word you would use right now with Oregon State Gary Anderson very abruptly surprised everybody quits the head coach he had a long term deal he was the guy here he's no longer here Corey Hall interim coach how's that affected Oregon State? it was surreal yesterday to, to sit in the offices and, and to get coaching cards you know the business cards from some of these coaches some of the offices were empty and then we ended our day meeting with Corey <laughs> and the energy that uh, that just out of his body uh, that he exuded throughout that interview is exactly what we saw in warm-ups. He had a perma smile. He's high energy. He's what, you know, he's a guy, and, and I think because he brings that, that they elevated into this position. Not the most experienced. He was the cornerback coach, not even a coordinator. But I think Scott Barnes, the AD, knew that he needed a guy that could be emotional and try to lift this team up out of the doldrums that they find themselves in. Picture of stability on the other side. David Shaw, seventh year, great success at Stanford. And the Cardinal playing their best football of the year by far. Coming off a bye week before that, a dominant victory against the Ducks of Oregon. Well, Cameron Scarlett is going to be the starting tailback. Hesitated there, almost like a fake kneel down, and that didn't really work. He got back to the 19-yard line. I don't know if that was designed or not. It was interesting, but Scarlett and the Stanford offense. We'll see if Scarlett will be on the field for the first snap. Keller Chris, the quarterback, 6'5", 234 from Palo Alto so he's a local kid his dad was a coach with the 49ers so he went to Palo Alto High School now a coach with the Broncos his uncle Paul you may know the head coach at Wisconsin 10 and 4 as a 10 and 2 rather as a starting quarterback at Stanford and he gets the first snaps of the game and most efficient day he's had 15 to 21 three touchdowns against those Ducks in that blowout so no Bryce Love here for the Cardinal playing very well on offense the last few weeks their offensive line has been a lot better their first play from scrimmage here at Reeser is a handoff to Cameron Scarlett, the kid from Portland, back in his home state for a couple yards on first down. And his brother, who came as a grad transfer to Stanford, Brennan Scarlett, the two overlap for one year, so the brothers got a chance to play college football together, both here from the Pacific Northwest. And one of the keys for Cameron is you've got to do what you are capable of doing. 
and you just you can't pretend to be Bryce Love. You know, that, let the scout team running back on the other side all week with Oregon State pretend to be that guy. You have got to stick to your game and what you do best. He's averaged better than five yards a carry. There's a little quick pitch to Scarlett for a gain of a couple yards on second down. It'll be third and six for the Cardinal. One thing I will be curious is the tackling tonight. It was a point of emphasis all week that if Bryce was going to be in the game with that sore ankle, there were going to be a lot of leg tackling. And, and, and when you've got an explosive guy like Bryce, you don't want to let him get started. I will be curious if Oregon State against David Shaw is going to pursue and tackle in a similar vein or against maybe a little bit less explosion, be a little more sound in their fundamentals. Stanford, a rare team that wins the toss and takes the ball. That's what happened. They wanted it first, immediately facing a third down and six. Play clock starting to wind down a little bit. Christ looking to throw across the middle, knocked away incomplete, intended for Dalton Schultz. I don't think it would have been enough anyway. Ongalu knocked it away. The middle linebacker is fourth down. That's a really nice play. Ongalu by far the leading tackler for these Beavers. Everything you want there for Chris. Good protection around him. An option route. A better play by the middle linebacker on the tight end. Dalton Schultz to poke that ball away. Good kicking game for the Cardinal this year. Jake Bailey, the punter from Solana Beach, California. Oregon State's got two punt returners deep. Bailey standing at his own 10 yard line. For the Oregon State defense, a nice start for the Beavers. Play clock all the way down. They do get the ball snapped. It'll be Timmy Hernandez taking it. No fair catch. He goes backwards. That was not a great decision inside the 30, back to about the 27 yard line. And that's where Oregon State will have the ball for the first time with their senior quarterback, Daryl Garrettson, a transfer from Utah State. He's been in this system for a long while. 20 starts and, and that familiarity certainly helps and you watched them a week ago against Colorado by far their best game of this season and they got to a little different identity two tight ends lots of motion fly sweet you know trying to get to that dynamic and we're going to see that right off the bat here as well two tight ends can slow a defense down but get ready to see lots of motion shifts that window dressing pre snap. Uncle Ron, a longtime NBA referee. We better not see Daryl arguing with the officials in this game. First down, Beavers. And their best player on offense is their tailback, number 34, Ryan Nall. He gets the ball first and gains a couple of yards. He and Cameron Scarlett, Brock, were high school teammates. Won a state title, in fact, here in the city of Portland at Central Catholic High School. A year older is Nall, and he is just a grinder. 170 some yards a week ago, week and a half ago against Colorado. So a high school team that had two running backs on the same state championship team both playing against one another in a Pac-12 game here a few years later. And all empties the backfield Garrettson in the shotgun on second down. Stanford has some pass rush coming and Garrettson goes down. The sack by Jordan Perez the linebacker. And that is the difference between pre and post snap and you get an empty you're going to shift into empty here and you're trying to get a good feel for what the defense is going to do. It looked everything like a three man pressure and then Perez could see those eyes disappear the quarterback the blind side he comes around for a critical sack and these are the third downs that Stanford needs defensively needs to improve on this down and distance. 107th in the country weird to see for the Cardinal defensively struggling on this down yeah, so many years Stanford's defense was one of the best in the country on third down looked like a screen I think Stanford read it well and Daryl Garrettson did well just to throw that one at the feet of Nall. one of my favorite players in college football this season read it and that is a nose tackle big number 66 you're going to hear us call his name often tonight Garrettson does the right thing and throws that ball away but it was Harrison Phillips the only nose tackle in America with 50 some tackles and the leading tackler and that doesn't tell the whole story it is playmaking like that and the awareness and the understanding to read the screen and the nose tackle breaks it up good stuff. Nick Perebski who's a big looking punter on fourth and fifth looking huh yeah well you know we're not standing right next to him but he looks big he didn't show off a big leg there though that was anything but big Nick what happened. They're, they're waiting to spot the ball. I think uh, the uh, official there needed a well, little help. It, it's not quite back 12 after dark. You know, we're, we're getting close. And you remember the Kooks punter a couple weeks ago against Cal had a one yard punt for oh, Mike Leach. This was way better than that, Brock. 
This was six yards. Uh, yikes. That's a hosel shot. I'm familiar with that on the golf course. Typically my eight iron looks a lot like that. That is a shank. Remind me not to play golf with you if that is typical. No, you'll be fine. It's the houses, and golf carts, everything else. And there's nobody who does those plays quite like that. Christ is throwing a fade incomplete intended for J.J. Arcega Whiteside. It's second down. No, they don't. They're, they're, you're, you're right. You look around college football and I mean the commitment that takes to recruit tight ends. You know to, to be able to use extra linemen in those situations and to ingrain that mindset and you do it from day one. That is spring ball. That is installation when you do short yardage and goal line. And you go around high school fields and you see those cages on the field. Why do they have those? Because you want to play so low. You want to fire off low and hard. Exactly what Sanford does. I got Wilson as a tight end. A fullback blocking for Scarlett who ran into his own man. I think there was a hole there. And Cameron Scarlett got a yard. That's it. That's third down. That may be our first example of a little difference between Bryce Love and Cameron Scarlett. That's no knock on Scarlett. Bryce Love is one of the most explosive players in the country. And that had a chance to be a nice game. That was blocked well, I thought. Morgan State has a chance here, Dave, to get a big third down stop and hold Stanford to a field goal. Colby Parkinson, a tight end in the slot on the left side. Connor Weddington, both of those guys, true freshmen on the left side. They're going to give it to Weddington, and that was read beautifully. The tackle by Oregon State, no gain. It is fourth down. You can see no laces right there. You're trying to get the ball out of your hands as quickly as you can, but a better play by the safety there. Omar Hicks Onu all over it. You can see the formation. Read that very first step. If you're going to make a tackle for loss, it is that reaction on the first step that's so critical. Stanford, a little confusion on the special teams, making sure they had enough blockers out there. That's good. You got to make sure you have enough people to block. Jet Toner had a good year as a place kicker. 34 yards, play clock winding down. They snap the hold. The kick is up, and he hooked it. No good. How about that for the Beavers? Our camera can't even follow him. He's bouncing around so much. Corey Hall has puffed up the interim head coach. His defense comes up with a stop. Still scoreless. Beavers and the Cardinal. Hard to get better football weather than this. In Corvallis, Oregon, alongside the Willamette River, twilight time at Reeser Stadium. The lights are on. The Beavers playing some inspired football early in this one. Scoreless. They'll start right around their own 20-yard line. First down with that jet sweep action. Ryan Dahl with a nice hole up the middle and tough running. He'll get the first down. Not a lot of wiggle, and there doesn't need to be for a guy that was so productive, a state champion in high school. He is their best offensive player, and they're going to lean on him, and you should. I mean, Stanford defensively, we talked about them on third down, Dave. The other area is their rushing defense, and almost 200 yards a game, 97th in the country. Some of that was early, and, and maybe not, well, not maybe, not tackling as well as you're used to seeing them. The teams have also committed to that run game against them a little bit more than the Cardinal teams of the past. Yeah, it hasn't been the same Stanford defense. They are playing better in the last few weeks. Here comes a tight end in motion. They will give the ball to Nall. Phillips there to hit him. He falls forward and gets a couple of yards. This is kind of what you were referring to, Brock, early in the season. Stanford tackling was not as good as we've seen it. We'll, we'll show you some examples of that as we go along. The tackling has improved. Yeah, and it was the first time that I've heard this season a coach, and it was it was David Shaw with us this week, saying we missed a lot of reps in two days. Two days were off the table. The legislation of college football said you can't do that, and he really felt like his team got out of the gate slow, especially in some of the physical elements like tackling. Second down and eight. Nall with another carry. He spun through a tackle. All right, now let's take a look at some of those examples. What you'll see here is a lot of reaching, just just not finishing a lot of the tackles here, not not bringing the the full body that you hear those defensive coaches all the time. You know, you got to wrap, you got to bring the legs right there. That San Diego State loss, and the Aztecs were effective there late in that game, running through those arm tackles, just not bringing the force. It has been better over the last few weeks, and Ryan Nall will test it tonight. 
But it was interesting to talk to David Shaw about the impact of the no two a days early season. Stanford was one and two. Those back to back losses. That pass just flat out dropped. That would have been a first down on third and five. That needed to be caught. Noah Tongiai, who's one of their better receivers from the tight end spot. That was right in his hands. Yeah, second leading receiver on this team. And Identity. That's the word we heard a little bit yesterday. Certainly what I heard down on the field with a lot of the coaches felt like getting to their tight ends, two tight ends, sure helped a week ago. Would have helped to catch that third down conversion. And we'll help here if Nick can get better in a six yard punt. Well, Nick Perebski, who shanked, just flat out shanked his first punt. This one better. See how it bounces. It bounces out of bounds. Not bad execution there inside the 20. We'll see if it's a different quarterback for Stanford. I think that's a possibility when we come back. Beautiful day in Corvallis. No score in the Pac-12. Be back right after this. And it is still Keller Christ in there. We will see KJ Costello and probably sooner rather than later. Now Trevor Spates is in there. He gets that little quick pitch. And Spates, who Stanford really likes, he's a young running back, hasn't carried the ball much. No gain on first down. That's three snaps of that. And if you were to to put Bryce Love in that situation, kind of to transpose, that the word I'm looking for, and you could just put them yeah. side by side. What you would see with Bryce is just the patience. What Laura said, exactly what he's trying to encourage his teammates. But you know what they can't do? They can't be patient. <laughs> they don't have the hundreds of reps. They also don't have the four three electricity. That speed that Bryce brings to the table. Chris will throw that one caught by Irwin. Spins it upfield, takes a big hit, and goes down. It'll be third down. But what is Stanford missing with Bryce Love? Our Nissan Heisman watch, certainly one of the top contenders for the Heisman Trophy. Nine rushes of 50 yards or more in just seven games, close to the all time record. 51 yards per rushing TD, almost 200 yards a game. Nine straight games with 100 plus rush yards, tied with McCaffrey. Longest streak in Stanford history, and many other numbers to tell you how special Bryce Love has been, but he's not in uniform. Can Stanford win without him? 20th ranked team in the country playing well but on the road and struggling early in this one third and four Chris throws middle it's caught for another first down and another broken tackle our Sega white side inside Oregon State Territory driven out of bounds right near the 40. And Stanford may not be electric on the outside but they are loaded at tight end and our Sega white is a big physical kid and what I like about these last couple throws here from Kellen he's putting it right on the body of his guys and he's allowing them to use that big frame and to shield those defenders be it corners be it safeties and just look at the size advantage you have there on Isaiah Dunn at five foot 11 170 pound true freshman out there just a difficult physical matchup all those options just no number 20 Chris throws our Sega white side and he fumbles somehow with one hand I think he picked the ball up and scooped it into his belly to avoid the turnover that could have been a disaster and this is what Oregon State is going to need a one and six without a win over an FBS opponent this season already the drop pick six interception Wonderful catch there on our Sega White. And as he's moving that football, an even better job there by Oregon State to fight and rip and get the hand in. That was Landry Payne. Textbook right there. Former cornerback coach turned head coach Corey Hall had to like what he saw out of Landry. Yeah, he's got some talent back there. Second and 24, final minute of the first quarter. Chris over the top. Irwin is open. He'll make the catch and slip. Goes out of bounds, but a good gain for the Cardinal to set up third down a little more manageable. Yeah, our Sega Whiteside's got his skill set, and, and, and he's a big physical guy. You saw that on the slant and in those inside routes. Irwin's one of the better route runners. In fact, Mike Bloomgren, his coordinator, told us, I don't think I can disagree, he may be one of the best route runners in this conference. Final seconds of the first quarter. I think Stanford's content just to regroup and let the quarter come to an end and run their third down play on the other side of the field here at Reeser Stadium. How about that quarter? Yeah, I'm I think back 12 after dark, near and dark. <laughs> it's not quite dark yet, Brock. Still sunset time. OSU will take this though, scoreless at the end of one. We're at Oregon State Beavers looking for their second win. What would be a huge upset 
even without Bryce Love Stanford a big favorite 20th ranked team in the country a lot of momentum but a scoreless first quarter we start the second Stanford faces a third and seven inside Oregon State Territory Keller Chris the quarterback off to a sluggish start he's going to swing it out left side Connor Weddington gets a block uses his speed and gets the first down circle those two tight ends because that is the conundrum you find yourself in if you're playing defense you know that they are both threats in the passing game and then if you leave any space the most explosive player on the perimeter for Stanford is this true freshman Weddington from Sumner Washington up in my neck of the woods he is a dynamic kid a very prolific high school running back and he's made the transition to play in space and doing a fine job of it he's got a chance to be a really good player for Stanford and that was a nice play. Remember, it was second and 24, and Stanford converts for a first down. Spates, the tailback, straight ahead running this time. Got to the 25, a gain of three. Tough for Stanford so far to move the ball on the ground. They will stick with it. And when you're playing a defense that has struggled as mightily as the Beavers have, third worst in college football, 44 points a game. You just kind of go through the list here. There's nothing really on that side of the ball. They've done well this season. Big fella can, can stop it. <laughs> that is Aiden, about 350 pound nose tackle coming off the field. But they will be committed, Will Stanford, to that run game. They will be patient throughout. Second down and seven. Spates is still the tailback. I'm going to hand it to Trevor Spates, who gets stopped right at the line, falls forward, maybe got a yard or two. Jonathan Willis led the way. Another third down for the Cardinal coming up. It's one of the areas here, and it wouldn't matter if Bryce Love is in there or not. The challenge there to get to the second level, that's been some of the problems here. You see Willis right here. He remains unblocked. If nobody blocks you. It doesn't matter if it's Bryce Love. You can be as patient as you want. That middle linebacker is sitting there ready to feast. Corey Hall, the interim head coach, still very much involved on the defensive side of the ball. Third and five. Play clock winding down. Christ looking to his right. He'll throw right. It is knocked away. That ball took a long time to get to Trent Irwin, and the linebacker knocked it away. It's just a little split second. And you've watched Stanford for a lot of years, Dave. It's just that little hesitance right there. You look at the numbers here for for Chris. He's eight of twelve. But these are the plays is this schedule is going to continue to toughen up down the stretch that ball just has to be out a half tick quicker versus that zone coverage. I think if it had been it would have been a first down. Jet toner who really badly hooked his first field goal try this one from 40 yards. He has been reliable this year. This time the kick is up and through So jet toner for the first points of the night on either side. We're in the second quarter three nothing Stanford in Corvallis. I don't need your jokes because I know you'll have them after I tell you I'm colorblind. But even a colorblind guy can see the beauty in that shot. There are some jokes on the table. Well, that's where yeah. all the interceptions came from. That oh, no wonder you were it terrible. It explains a lot. There are yeah, a lot of people sure. out there in the audience go, oh, okay, now, <laughs> now. We get it. Matt Campbell's got a good thing going with the Cyclones. Second down and long play fake. Garrettson throws. That is caught. Nice catch reaching up by Isaiah Hodgins, who's a talented young player. Gain of 14, third and short. Couple guys here to choose from for Garrettson. Single safety flew out of there. If Garrettson stares that down, he's got a seam wide open. And I guarantee you, the coaches up in the booth right now are saying the same thing down to the sidelines. But those are the plays they need out of the true freshman. Really popped early. He's hit some of that freshman wall, and that's a big, big play on second and long. Set up a much more manageable third down. Oregon State hasn't converted yet. This is third and one. They will empty. No, they're going to snap it straight to Nall, who breaks a tackle to get the first down. Now that had a chance to be stopped, but it's hard to bring number 34 to the ground. And that is one of those missed tackles that looks eerily similar to the beginning of the season. That is just a one on one in the hole. That is an extra guy, an unblocked guy that you have got to beat in those third down and short yardage situations. And that looks an awful lot like some of those misses against San Diego State earlier in the year. That's Okariki there, the middle linebacker, number 20. Everybody does their job up front. He scrapes beautifully. Got to find a way to finish that tackle. Okariki's been playing better. That is a tackle that you're right. The middle linebacker's got to make, no matter how good the back is. 
Uh, Handed off to Nall. Nice blocking. Big hole. Nall out into the open. Ryan Nall into Stanford territory. First down, Oregon State. And this is where you're going to see some of the vulnerability of that Stanford run defense. Those guys, look at the line of scrimmage. There's a hat on a hat, and you just don't see a Solomon Thomas that you saw a year ago that's getting off that block, and he's finishing those tackles. The nose tackle is the leading tackler, Harrison Phillips. It's those two edge guys, converted tight end. Dylan Jackson that is getting better at the other edge, but you need those guys at times to get off those blocks. Not happening as frequently as decoordinator Lance Anderson needs. He'll snap it to Nall directly again. This time he'll go to the corner, uses a block nicely. Another first down inside the 30. That's a good run. And this is exactly what Kevin McGibbon, the offensive coordinator for Oregon State, some of the veteran guys on his staff, Dave Baldwin, and he's coached against Stanford way back when. There's a good look at, at Kevin. There can be a little bit of freedom as a play caller offensively. When you've got a young interim head coach, it's given you full autonomy to do your job. A little of that sense yesterday from Kevin. He's going to let it loose, and don't be surprised here over the course of this. they got some tricks up their sleeve. What does Oregon State have to lose? Daryl Gerritsen from the shotgun, first and ten. Hand off Pierce, right side running. They'll get a couple on first down. And this is a program that on October 9th, so we're not talking about before the year or in the summertime, right in the middle of the season. Gary Anderson, very well respected football guy, a guy who's been around a long time, quit, walked away, middle of the season. Shocked everybody. I mean, it's eye opening to be over in that football office and see the walls empty, the bookcases empty in the head coach's office. No nameplate on the head coach's office. And yet the Beavers are playing well here tonight. Second down and eight. Here comes some pressure from Stanford picked up that throw across the middle completed Justin Reed with the open field tackle Go right into the blitz football 101 Get the edge pressure safety's coming down you get immediate leverage there and again this third down this is it I mean these are the downs and distance for Stanford over the course of this season for Oregon State in this one tonight that you've got to take advantage of and if you're Stanford you've got to get off the field if you're McGibbon and crew Keep eating that clock, possessing the ball, and shortening this game. I think it's smart. Often you'll see Oregon State go faster against Stanford, trying to slow it down. Third and three, big play for the Beavers. Hernandez comes in motion. They will hand it to Nall. Change of direction. Nall will get the first down inside the 15. Well, there's the two buddies since third grade. And I don't know who's won more of those tussles between Alfieri and Nall, but this time a beautiful cutback. Not just a one direction guy, that quick cutback. That's where he gains the separation there to move the sticks. And all Alfieri can do is try to chase him down. 173 yards against Colorado a week ago. Awakened. This entire offense awakened to a degree in their best drive of the season. He's averaging eight yards a carry here tonight. Garrettson's going to throw it back. That's an offensive tackle who catches and will be shoved out of bounds at about the five yard line. Fred Laina and look at Corey Hall. He likes that play call. And we got a couple more of these. <laughs> we got a chance to watch and see and if they get the right opportunity they're going to let it go tonight. This is what you can do when you're one and six. When you're an interim coach look at Corey. Yeah, I told him to call that play. Go ahead, let it loose. It, it, it gained eight yards, didn't quite get in the end zone. It looked good, though. Second and two. Beavers knocking on the door. You figure 34 is getting the ball. He does. And he is stopped. Looked like a little bit short. Yeah, short by at least a half a yard. Third down. How about Lawina, the tackle? <laughs> Are you serious? When was the last time he caught a football in open field with a blocker in front? Every offensive lineman right now watching this game is like, yeah, I knew coach should have called that for me back in the day. Why don't we do that? They have kept the ball on the ground and been effective. Third down. You figure Beavers might just figure they've got two plays to get a half a yard. No, but Garrettson kept it. 
and fighting to try to get there. I don't know. Close. I think he got the first down. They're going to put the ball down, and what will they signal? We may need a measurement. Huh? No, we don't. First down. First and goal. That's pretty good stuff there from McGibbon and, and his quarterback that he's been with along the way. The transfer from Utah State. A lot of shifts, a lot of motions, making sure everybody gets set. That was the key on that play. And an excellent read there from Garrett as well. So it's first and goal. Beavers trying to punch it in. Had a hard time in the red zone against Colorado. They are moving the ball on the ground now, though. Garrettson again keeps it, made a move, and scores. Wow. Looking like a running back. Well played, 75 yards, more than seven minutes for the Beavers, and they punch it in to take the lead. With under six minutes to go until halftime, a little high snap, but the kick is up and good. I don't know if you're going to see any coach in college football get up quite like this. Maybe Dabo. Dabo will try. He once had that. When he got to fill in and he got his shot years ago and this is exactly what Corey Hall wanted to see three third down conversions a trick play possessing the ball putting the pressure on the team on the other sidelines and letting his guys cut it loose. Such a strange time around the uh, football offices at Oregon State the head coach's office is empty nothing on the walls nothing on the bookshelves Corey Hall has kept his DB room office and look you understand why sort of symbolic but also just easier in the middle of the season not to worry about that stuff but still nobody in the corner office here in Corvallis Corey Hall interim head coach they played their best football under Corey Hall yep. for two weeks in a row. So you got to appreciate that the two coordinators Kevin McGiven the offensive coordinator on the right side Kevin Clune on the left side defensive coordinator kick off into the end zone for a touchback a lot of intellectual capital between those two who've been doing it together a long time Mike Bloomgren David Shaw seven years they've been together looking at that call sheet what can we get to here this Oregon State defense has given us some fits as you can see stopping the run first and foremost you've got to see a double move in my mind before halftime here as much as they've been squatting on these routes it over the top and off and a trip in the backfield whether it was a quarterback and the running back together Scarlett tripped up before he got to the line and they did they just clicked ankles there and go right to the ground well, this Stanford offense has not been impressive in the first half down 7 3 Christ throws into traffic and very lucky again that wasn't intercepted I mean, he's had three, maybe four of them now in this first half that could have been picked and haven't been picked. That time it was Landry Payne. The only guy in Payne is Irwin here because the quarterback is just staring that down. This is where Kellen, with a season and a half under his belt now, his 13th start, you've got to get through progressions. And you've got to do it with some anticipation. So Stanford using the timeout to save some time now right away they face a third and eight they could give the ball back to Oregon State with plenty of time left. Blake lock winding down. Here's the snap nice pocket going deep toward Irwin who tries to adjust to the ball. It's out of bounds didn't give him a chance to catch it not even close. Fourth and eight. Well, that was what you were talking about. You got to go down the field at some point but well, that, that, to a degree. Not that on the early down, not on third and eight, you know, where they're going to try to keep everything in front of them. Get to some play action pass. Got to get to some of those shots. Can't fall on your face on first down and put you in these difficult third down situations. But you're right now. Look at the time. Two timeouts for Oregon State. They get this ball to midfield. They've got a shot or two in them before half. That used a total of 32 seconds. Jake Bailey, the punter, gets off a nice high punt. Fair catch signal inside the 20 made by Hernandez and Oregon State. Stanford has hardly moved the ball on offense. They haven't had it much. Oregon State's played some keep away in this game. We'll see how aggressive the Beavers are. Ryan Nall gets the carry. The ball comes out. Bad exchange. Stanford thinks they have it. What a huge mistake for the Beavers. 
Harrison Phillips came away with the ball, and that just feels like a gut punch. I said to you during the break, when is it in baseball? 50 games, 60 games that you learn, kind of the stats really do tell the story. Well, football, when you're 12 fumbles in to this season, one of the worst in all of college football, the worst in this conference in turnover ratio. These are the kind of things that happen. A little zone read there, and all doesn't know, just in between. He can't have hesitancy and in between. Guess who's Johnny on the spot? Big ol' nose tackle, Harrison Phillips. 20% of the Oregon State drives have ended in a turnover this year, and that's what you're talking about. They turn and hand it off three times. They go in a half with the lead. You just don't even mess around with, with his own read or any of those things, and you get the ball to begin the second half. Instead, the defense is going to have to rise up, and Stanford has to find a way to finally convert. You give Stanford credit for falling on the ball, but that's totally unforced. Christ in the pocket over the top. Arcega Whiteside gets shoved out of bounds. He catches the ball incomplete. My goodness. I mean, he just got pushed directly out of bounds. No flag thrown. Sean Wilson, the true sophomore corner here. But a hand fighting on both sides of it. Oh. The official's going to say that 12th defender was already covering him. Yep. And I, I, I think maybe that was the right decision on that one. As a wide receiver, once you run into and, and you get to that white paint and you run out and that extra defender is there to cover you, you typically don't get the benefit of the doubt, no matter how much Mike Bloomgren, the coordinator, wants it or not. Yeah, I got no problem. No flag on that one. White clock under five again. This time they do get the ball snap. That throw, Irwin, will be tackled after a very short gain inbounds. Sanford is going to use one of its two final timeouts on third down. Third and ten for the Cardinal. They can get a first down. 36 seconds until halftime. Let's take a white side one on one to the bottom. Chris is going to look in that direction instead throws metal incomplete. He whistled it right by Donald Stewart. It's fourth down. That was the right read. He had a single safety to begin with Oregon State mixing it up there and on the snap safety comes out over the top You can see him right at the bottom of your screen. He's flying out to our Sega white side. This is the right read you Just got to put it in a situation where you guy gets it Nobody does but pretty good coverage too. Yeah. I mean give the Beavers credit man. They are all over this There's not a ton of gimmies And once again responding in the sudden change moment here holding the Cardinal to a field goal Yeah, the first time Stanford got a turnover deep in Beavers territory. They missed a field goal this one 33 yards kind of similar Jet toners kick is up and it is good. So they turn the fumble and recovery into three points Oh good luck Laura talking to him at half <laughs> Yeah, Laura Rutledge is gonna gonna have a chat with him here in a minute Laura just get ready for that one. <laughs> Beavers will get the ball to start the second half for now. Time to send it to studio. Adnan, Joey, and Jesse, take it away, guys. We got a game in the Pac-12 on Thursday night. Oregon State big underdogs at home, and yet they lead as we start the third quarter 7-6. Moments ago, Lauren Rutledge with the Stanford head coach, David Shaw. What adjustments are you looking to make offensively in the second half? Well, the biggest thing is we got to play better. We got blocking better up front. Uh, I think the, we've gotten a little bit better as the half went on, but we're not running the ball the way we're capable of. And it's not about having Bryce Love or not having Bryce Love. It's about us like, going out there and executing. You have planned to rotate quarterbacks. You've had K.J. Costello play in the past. Will we see him? Do you plan to see him in the second half? Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Laura, and we'll see. I mean, but K.J. Costello has given this Stanford offense a spark at times this year. There was a UCLA game in particular. Stanford's offense was sluggish. Josh Rosen was slinging it around. Yep. Costello came in, changed the whole game. Led Stanford on nine scoring drives in that game. And I would not be shocked. Beavers are going to get the ball to start the second half. When Stanford does get it back, I would not be shocked to see KJ Costello in there. You would think certainly in the second half. I, I, if I was in that halftime meeting room, I guarantee you, though, that it was about the run game. It was not necessarily all about the quarterback, and they're going to ask him to play with more anticipation. But to have less than 40 yards against this group defensively that has struggled so mightily to be consistent stopping the run, that is the majority of the mystery. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Well, Stanford will kick it deep to Oregon State, and that will be another touchback. 
Well, the Beavers, who did play well, leading 7 6, Ryan Dahl in particular, he was the best running back on the field for Oregon State, gets the ball on the first play of scrimmage here in the second half. I'll tell you one of the more telling numbers of anything was just how much Oregon State possessed the ball. And what I mean by that is not overall time of possession, it is within each snap. They took the air out. Average about 35 seconds per play. What Stanford likes to do on the other side, and Oregon State matched that. And that first half flew by, and that is advantage Beavers. The pressure squarely on the heavily favored Cardinal in the second half. They've been more run oriented than Stanford has. A jet sweep motion. They'll just hand it to Nall again. Nall trying to pick his way forward. And that strength from Ryan Nall there was not Ryan much Nall there, but he got a couple yards. Now you got a very manageable third and five, and you're facing the. 107th ranked team on third down. Let's see a look at Bryce Love, and I'm sure he was encouraging, and he's talking patience, but there's a time where your skill set is so unique as his is. <laughs> you can try to encourage other guys. They just don't have what you've got in the tank. And that, that, that was the point that I was making. Look, I get what David Shaw is saying, too. It's not all about not having Bryce Love, but if you're a Heisman voter and you're watching this game, maybe you're thinking, man, this guy is special. Because this has been an explosive offensive team with Love in the backfield. And a man. Third and five, Stanford brings an ex extra rusher. They'll swing it out right side with a block out in front, but then a cut toward the sideline. I thought that was going to be a first down, and it ended up being short. Elijah Holder. Now a penalty flag comes in. Is that going to be a taunting penalty against Stanford? After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number nine. He pulled the player's helmet off. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. This is number nine's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Number 81 of the offense may remain in the game. So that's Ben Edwards, the safety. David Shaw headset off, and he's going to give the officials a, an earful on that side. A tremendous tackle there. And you're going to see Tongiai, the tight end, he continues, but there it's always the second guy. It's always the responder in that situation. And once that shot goes to the face, you rip the helmet off. That's the right call. Instead of fourth down, punting the ball away, Oregon State will get it right near midfield. Play fake. Garrettson in the pocket, steps up, and then takes a big hit, goes down. Cotton Phillips and company with the sack. That's a really nice line stunt there by the Cardinal. Big 66. That nose tackle, I've talked about him all night. He's going to stunt here, and you're going to see the influence he has on the rest of the group. And when you hold the ball in the pocket there, you run out of time. Got to avoid the negative plays there. You feel that pocket just squeeze, and you've got to sail that one into the fifth row. Lost about five. Second sack for Stanford at second and 15. Still early in the third quarter. Similar theme though. Beavers offense being very deliberate. Garrettson, more pressure comes, takes a big hit, but delivers on target. Flag is thrown at the end of the play, and that may be a hit illegally against Stanford. Meanwhile, Tongiai, the tight end for a first down and more. And, a and this is the guts this kid has. Another line stunt coming right in his chest plate. That's Joey Alfieri. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, this foul is combined with targeting helmet to helmet contact. Wow, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. You're trying to change behavior. David Shaw doesn't like it. His team has been targeted an awful lot. They are a physical football team, but you are trying to, you know, really legislate just cleaner strike zones and hitting that quarterback, that defenseless player, lower. So all the penalties on this drive, the direct snap to Nall, then the handoff, cut back middle, Tyner, touchdown! Got in Thomas Tyner, the Oregon transfer. Not been many of those from a duck to a beaver. 
the six play 75 yard drive with tons of penalties helping along remember it was fourth down after the play the penalty kept the drive going then a targeting after a long conversion and David Shaw's Stanford team is in some trouble here tonight in Corvallis. Oregon State had nothing to lose tonight. Wildcat end around, throw to a tackle. You knew that they were going to cut it loose. Stanford has to play a whole lot better in this second half, and now is going to have to do so. Down eight. Change up the pre-snap picture to affect that safety post-snap. You're going to see the fake here on the toss, the end around. And watch that free safety in center field, Frank Bunkham. Watch him just hesitate. Look at his eyes. It's those two steps, and it's over. It's why teams love the window dressing. It's why they love the jet sweep. It's why they, why they love the motion. They want to put those defenders on their heels. They know they can't just line up necessarily and run it right at Stanford. But you get those guys, even as brilliant as they are, thinking and get their eyes lost. Advantage Beavers. Two different 15 yard penalties on that drive. Some creativity. Elijah Holder out with an injury. Stanford, that was a very costly drive for their defense. Keller Christ is going to start the second half at quarterback for the Cardinal. The last 14 plays of the first half for Stanford's offense, a total of 31 yards. High formation. Scarlett, handoff. Getting to the corner right side, showing some speed. Cameron Scarlett cuts it up field first down. That's the best run of the night for Stanford. A little bounce, right? All this commitment inside the tackles. And Oregon State, they play a lot of what we call quarters coverage, and that's awful for Holder, and it was yeah. a horrific hit. Just his own teammate flying in there, Justin Reed, on that seam route, and it just wiped out his right leg, and you feel terrible anytime you see that. Anytime, but especially a guy, he is a really good player. Tough kid. And we didn't show that injury replay. It was not pretty to watch. Scarlett this time left side, bouncing off some tacklers, and Scarlett gets another first down. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Yeah, guys, Elijah Holder, of course, dealing with a lot of pain, but the real loud scream coming out of the medical tent was from Justin Reed, feeling so horrible about the injury to his teammate and his role in it. And everyone on the sideline trying to get Justin Reed back focused in the game. The coach is telling him, look, we need you. you got to focus on this right here. And tough to blame Justin Reed for being upset. Those guys are very close to high-level players. Justin Reed is playing great. Christ from the shotgun will throw. That one is caught by Stewart. First down inside Oregon State territory. So what are a couple adjustments here? I mean, this is why David Shaw makes five million a year. He's pretty darn good at what he does. You come out and you get two plays to your run game out in the perimeter. One a bounce play, the other the little jet sweep. Get into space, make these guys tackle, and instead of the short routes, a little stick and slant, you know, a good deep out there across the field, showcasing some of Chris' arm. Adjustments the name of the game in this second half been the challenge for Oregon State all season long. Scarlett takes the handoff. Scarlett inside the 25 down to the 24. We've seen a broken tackle. We saw a nice bounce play early. Have we seen a missed tackle created in the Stanford run game tonight? I don't think so. Maybe one. Big part of the story of this game is they are missing their Heisman Trophy candidate. Final minute and a half of the third quarter as a huge favorite Stanford on the road is down. Single safety check with me. Chris play clock down to five under five. Chris with all kinds of time now will try to run it. He is tough to bring down taking a bunch of hits though. And he's strong enough to get a yard or so on the play. He had a long time to throw. Finally just decided to give it up. Corey Hall's group defensively is hanging in tonight. Yep. A lot of inexperienced secondary guys doing an excellent job in disguising an excellent job on squatting and sitting on these routes. And after you throw a pick and only nearly two others, you're a little hesitant at times to pull the trigger. Huge play for the Beavers. Keller Christ on third down, 0 for his last four with an interception. Blocked well again, and that one almost intercepted. Man, he had a receiver open, and maybe it got tipped at the line and started to flutter. 
Now that had a chance to be a big play. Instead, it was almost a turnover. Well, you saw Colby Parkinson running down the middle of the field. He's right here. We've asked about these tight ends. When are they going to come into play? And this is a ball that's just got to be thrown up. I mean, he's trying to drill it. I'm just seeing a quarterback that's out of rhythm. He's out of sync. His clock's messed up, and that's a ball that's got to go out over the top to the 6 6 tight end. Now that was not tipped. That was just a very poor throw. A 40 yard field goal try for Jet Toner. This is big for Stanford. Kick is up, and he hooks it back through. Ooh, Tiger would like that one. Yeah, you got to trust that draw. <laughs> he started off the outside and bring it back in. Takes a little guts. Oregon State's defense, I think, will be pleased, though. Stanford still has not gotten in the end zone. How about this guy? And he has not stopped. And if you're going to be emotional, you better be it for all three hours or four hours or whatever it's going to take from beginning to end to be consistent in that message. But Scott Barnes, the active AD. And how about this? Just over the last three years, you've had five acting ADs at this university. Yeah. And Scott Barnes is a good athletic director. And he had to be shocked with what happened with his head coach. I think he made a good decision about who to put in charge of this program, at least in the middle of the season. Three field goals for Stanford. They've cut the Oregon State lead to five on that fly sweep action. They will give it to Tyner, who gets to the 30. A gain of five or so on first down. That could be the final play of the third quarter. And I think it will be the final play of the quarter. How about this story tonight here in Corvallis? Wow. Wacky things have happened in this town <laughs> with some games on Thursday nights <laughs> in years past. Yes, they have. And we may have another one here tonight. Stanford, huge favorites on the road, rolling all the momentum coming in. And yet it's been the Beavers who have controlled this one. 15 minutes to play, they lead 14 to 9. You're watching the Pac 12 on ESPN, and I don't think anybody in this conference saw this one coming, although we still have a full quarter to play. Oregon State 1 and 6, 0 and 4 in conference play. They have been blown out all year long. Their coach quit midseason, walked away, and yet it's the Beavers who have a 14 9 lead on number 20 Stanford. Dave Fleming, Brock Hewitt, Laura Rutledge here from Corvallis. First play of the fourth quarter, a direct snap to Nall, who acted like he might throw, but he's not going to throw. He's going to run. That's what he does well. Got upended after a gain of a yard. Here we go, third down. Tell the story in the final 15 minutes. Four of nine, Oregon State tonight. This has been the area for Stanford this season. In their losses, you've got to get off the field in this down and distance. Neither offense has even 200 yards yet total in this game. Third and 13, play fake. Pressure was picked up. That throw is incomplete, though. And no penalty flag thrown. Oregon State's bench wanted a call for some contact. Justin Reed came in. Fourth down. Justin Reed came up looking for that penalty flag as well. I think that's one of those 50-50 shots. As that center fielder flies around, the younger brother, of Greg Reed, the former LSU All-American, now 49er, and he is incredibly active. No, that's not a penalty. He not, has every right to the football. Not even close. He's a really good player. He sure is. And it's funny, his brother got drafted out of LSU by the 49ers and helped recruit Justin to Stanford. There's contact on the punt. So we'll see what that call is. It's fourth and long. I think that was Justin Reed who made contact with the punter. What a mistake for Stanford. They have made so many of them. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Defense number eight, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And that is now penalty number eight for Stanford and a number of them of the 15 yard variety on sportsmen like targeting. David Shaw is pleading his case over here. Rugby style punter is out. He's punting 15 yards. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I get the argument where uh, you could see why Stanford's frustrated by that, but 
Those four penalties for 65 but total yes, yards. And you are putting yourself in this position yeah. for these officials to make these calls. Well, they are taking the play clock all the way down, just like they should. Hand off. That is number 21, Artavis Pierce. Got back to the line of scrimmage, no more. They are doing it, and it's the right philosophy, but the wrong philosophy is to burn two of those timeouts. Yep. And the previous one was burned. You're trying to get a little double cadence. You're trying to see what Stanford was doing defensively. And you would much rather have that in your pocket in a one possession game in the final five minutes. You have burned two on the offensive side of the ball. Second and ten. Interim head coach Corey Hall trying to get a win that would make a pretty good argument for him to keep the job. Garrettson flushed and he will throw it away. Now that will stop the clock. That helps Stanford 5 10 left in the fourth quarter, third and 10. You've also struggled in the punting game. But if you're going to play this style and you're going to go very conservative, which is the right approach for Oregon State, you've got to manage the clock and you've got to be sharp on special teams, and they have not done so. They have lost significant real estate every time they have punted the ball as well. Making this even more critical. I think it's a good point. I also think that they're feeling like Stanford's offense hasn't even really threatened the end zone in this game. I mean, they just have not done much of anything. See how aggressive they are on third to ten. Garrettson will sprint, plant, take a hit as he throws out of bounds incomplete. The clock stops again. It's fourth down. 5.04 to go. Stanford's defense did a good job there. To play into the boundary there. They go quads to the short side of the field to move the pocket. Try to get out of the reach of Harrison Phillips as he's destroyed so much of the pocket. But that field got so small on that late sail route. Big punt here. I think that's Connor Weddington. They do all this jersey exchanging, but I think it's Weddington who's back to receive this punt. A true freshman comes up, makes a fair catch signal, and catches it at the 25. State has one over a number one ranked team, Trojans, back in 1967. And this group of Beavers trying to summon those ghosts here tonight. Wiz. The Beavers spring a trap and shock the college football world. Now that was number one, USC. So I'm not saying that this game is quite like that, but Oregon State has a history on Thursday night. And they're trying to do it here with just under five minutes to go. Keller Christ has been at the quarterback the whole way for Stanford. Cardinal have 188 total yards without Bryce Love, who himself has averaged 198 on the year. Christ throws short, almost intercepted. But that Beaver team also had a Mike Riley in place. Yep. Was not one in six, an 0 in six versus FBS opponents, losing those by an average of 27 points a game. They haven't been close, basically. Tonight, they're also close to a monster win for their interim head coach, for all their coaches who were kind of left for dead for their players. Second down, Christ, a little pump fake. Now he's going to run and he'll go out of bounds. So many new pieces. Dave, this has been a remarkable coaching job. They bring five on the first down. They get to Chris early. They rush three that time. They cover everything up. Been a wonderful mix. Big time third down. And no Bryce Love to give the ball to on third and eight. The eraser. Oh, for their last seven on third down. Christ with pressure coming didn't see it goes down Jonathan Willis
First down, five man. Second down, three man. You're going to play some zone. This time you're going to run a perfectly stunt time stunt. And to your point, Keller Christ couldn't feel it. He hasn't felt much tonight as far as any rhythm and tempo in this offense whatsoever, but it has been his game for beginning to final three and a half. And the clock is rolling. Those are precious seconds ticking off this punt. Another good one from Bailey. Fair catch all the way back at the 32 yard line or so. Beavers are a couple of first downs away from a huge upset. 14 9, Oregon State. This is a big story developing in Corvallis. Oregon State may be a first down away. From pulling a huge shocker. Ryan Dahl on first down. And that's a nice game. When Stanford knows you're going to run it, you still get four outside the 35. And that may be the answer to just run at the big old grizzly bear. Instead of going laterally and letting Harrison Phillips run it down or holding calls, just try to run right at him. And Stanford's not calling a timeout. So you got time working off the clock maybe because it was a four yard gain you save it and see what happens on second down but those the seconds aren't coming back. And we're under three minutes to go. I'd imagine you'll get one after this down. Nall is going to take the snap himself. And he will hand it to Tyner coming back to the other side Tyner gets the first down. Wow, what a gutsy play call. Yeah, this kid is, this kid's a load. Very similar to the touchdown, in fact. A very similar concept. You're faking the toss pitch. It's exactly, it's just going the other way, in the other direction on the field. Tyner, a highly recruited kid, went to Oregon. He was surrounded by greatness there. Had to medically retire. His shoulders were so bad, he was out. He was out of football. No, made one man miss, and the ball is fumbled. Fumbled away, and Stanford has it. I don't believe it. Harrison Phillips comes up with his second recovery. Ryan Nall missed a reliable, got hit, and put it on the turf, and Stanford has life. What just happened? What just happened is 66 swims the center, blows up the running back, makes the play, and then comes back and, of course, out wrestles everybody for the football. That is what just happened. Well, Stanford's offense has not been able to get in the end zone all game. They've got two minutes, 30 seconds, two timeouts, and about 40 yards now to get in the end zone and escape with a victory. Keller Christ has had one of his worst nights as a college football player. He's got to dig deep here. Steps up and throws middle incomplete. I think it's a storyline in this game how stubborn Stanford has been. They have a second quarterback who at times has outplayed Christ this year in KJ Costello. He is a good player. He has played well. We have not seen him take one snap in this game. And Chris just frankly hasn't played his best game. Not even close. Well, he gets a chance, thanks to his defense, to rewrite the whole script when it matters the most. Ten and two as a starter. And that is all he is thinking is the 40 yards he's got to cover here to do the most important thing as a quarterback on the road, and that is win. Get the W. Blitz was picked up. That throw into coverage came late. Knocked down incomplete. The ball has arrived late over and over and over again tonight. And that's not an easy throw. I'm not saying that's easy. It is, of course, four down territory for Stanford, but it's third and ten. What a night his defense has had. Four for his last 17. 17 attempts for 31 yards. Got to get the ball snapped here. Down to two. They do. Christ, that one is behind Parkinson. And Stanford may be down to their final play. And they're screaming on their sidelines for a penalty. That ball, though, is so woefully poorly thrown. Shaw running down, looking for the flag. He is not going to get it on a ball that one hops the tight end. And if you thought it was loud earlier, here we go.
Game on the line for Stanford. Christ again across the middle, and what a catch! What a catch by Smith. Caden Smith, the tight end, it's first down, Stanford. I can't tell you how good that is. Four for your last 18, and you throw the best ball of the night. And Caden Smith is covered. He is covered as well as you can possibly cover him. Omar Hicks Onu saying, what? How? I am right in his hip pocket. I do everything right, but I just can't finish like Caden does. Well, now inside the 20, a fresh set of downs. Clock isn't as big of a factor. You got two timeouts. You can get a first down. Stanford can at the five. After the fourth down conversion, Chris throws short. What a catch by Cameron Scarlett. That was not a good throw. And if that hadn't been pulled in, that might have been tipped and intercepted. Even these have not been routine. Wow. Saw easy on the road in college football. Great catch. Great catch. He bailed him out there. No panic. Stanford playing this one down. Yeah, and I think it's smart. Don't give you, you score, you don't score. Game's going to be over either way, one way or the other. Under a minute to go. Christ pitches it. Schultz, the tight end, inside the 10. And again, it's four down territory. You know you have to get a touchdown. And you got two timeouts, and they will use one now. Somewhere Gary Anderson left this team two weeks ago, and he's watching this one. And I don't know how he feels. I, I'm sure he's happy for his players to be playing this well. But this team got a spark when that guy took over. There's no question about that. 47 seconds away from a win. They will hand it to Scarlett with a couple blockers ahead. Scarlett gets right to the mark. And I think he did get the first down. David Bright, the offensive lineman, is slow to get up. I think they stopped the clock to make sure they're going to look at it and see, did he get the first down? And he got it. No Bryce Love. Can Stanford escape? First and goal, Cardinal. Now they will wind the clock, which means, Stanford, you can't mess around here. Scarlett in the backfield. The kid from Oregon. Takes the handoff. Scarlett inside the five. And Stanford is not using that timeout. You got to go. And now they will. So they, they cost themselves a few seconds here. How much does that guy want to be on the field right now? I would think a lot. And if Stanford was thinking, hey, you know, we're three touchdown favorites. Oregon State hasn't won a game in conference. We can come up here without Bryce Love and get a win. 24 seconds, you can still run the ball, but you better have a second play already called. And you, you don't have a timeout now. Right. You, so you, time you can run it here, and you should have enough time to come back to line scrimmage, but you have to have a second play called in that moment. And your quarterback has got to be poised. Second and goal, Stanford. Three yards away from a win. Under center, Christ. Little jump ball. Arcega white side. Touchdown. I think the head coach Corey all was trying to get a timeout and they didn't call it and Stanford threw that jump ball and the kid of two basketball players looked like he was coming down with a rebound. And Corey sees it. He just as quick as he still is as fast as he is does not get in view of those officials does not get it. Stunned in Corvallis with 20 seconds to go. The game's not over. Stanford's going to go for two here. Which winners, would winners, all but put it away. Winners win in the end. Amazing. Of everything that goes wrong offensively, in fourth and ten, you throw in the coverage and you make the play. Third and goal, one on one situation, you make the play to win the game here in the final seconds. The fumble when Oregon State was just trying to run out the clock. Yeah. Parkinson, that time no flag thrown, so they don't get it. Apparently Stanford has no other options for that kind of play. <laughs> Did I say stubborn? Yes. And here it was, 22 seconds to go. Offensive coordinator's jobs, play callers. I'm going to get you a one-on-one. -on -one. Your job is to win it, and he does it perfectly. Never extends his arms. 
a young wide receivers when you get in those spots or tight ends. Right, you see that arm windmill back. He does not push into that DB. That action, he's just ripping the arm away like a D lineman swims. He swims and gets enough space there to use that length and that leverage. And Chris says, what? Fourth and ten, I threw a seed. And game on the line, I threw it to a spot inbound so my guy could be the difference maker. Now a field goal wins it. Now you only have 20 seconds. You have one timeout, the Beavers do. Jake Bailey, who is a good kickoff specialist, we'll see how Stanford lines this one up. Just booted deep for a touchback or something different. And you got that kind of leg. I think it's the safe play. With the game on the line. So now Stanford's defense with lots of coverage deep. Oregon State doesn't have to get it all here. They have the timeout. The clock will stop on a first down. Garrettson on the run being pursued back across his body that is complete out to the 40 and a timeout no they're going to stop the clock for the first down Oregon State will run up and try to clock it here well, they got to get lined up here they do the clock starts and you spike it two seconds wind down eight seconds to go so now you're thinking one more play to get you into field goal range with the timeout and try to win the game we saw 52 earlier would have been good from 48 it was online so you've got quite a bit of ground to cover here in just the one timeout or you simply try to give yourself a shot with a completion here in the timeout to chuck one into the end zone yeah and that's the other option too maybe take a chance Can't scramble around. Nope. Garrett's in the quarterback. Oregon State in control all night, down one. Pressure comes. That throw to the tight end is complete. And out of bounds with three seconds to go. Now, what do you do? Do you send the field goal team out there or do you try to throw deep? In the NFL, you got a kicker from 60 more than likely. Yeah, I don't think you can try. I think too far for a field goal try three seconds to go last chance for Oregon State Stanford's got three defenders at the goal line they're going to rush three Garrettson going to be pressured here he uncorks one toward the end zone it is intercepted and Stanford will go down and sprint to the locker room and escape Corvallis on a Thursday night with a win that was not pretty anything but pretty but in the end David Shaw gets another one for his Cardinal team 15 to 14 the final score incredible beauty of college football and a guy who's won a lot of games Talking to a guy who I think has a chance in his head coaching career to win a lot of games himself. I think he's going to be a good one. He has changed this program in a couple of weeks, but not quite enough tonight for Brock Hewitt, for Laura Rutledge, Dave Fleming saying so long from Corvallis. What a game. Stanford escapes 15-14.